Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Hey, did you hit the record button this time? I did. All right. Uh, we are also being joined by Chris, aka CGM. How are you doing? Nationals are in the world. So oh, nobody shut cares. Up. Uh, however, we do care that the special guest of the week is none other than Colby, making a second appearance on the podcast. How are you doing, Colby? I'm doing good, man. How are the rest of y'all doing tonight? Good. Uh, it is at the time sure. of us recording this podcast right now. It is October 21st, which is your birthday. So we want to wish you sure. a happy birthday. Thank you. Happy I appreciate birthday that. birthday to you. I, nobody ever said we want to hear you sing. Oh, but... that's part of singing. <laughs> oh, no, he... <laughs> I appreciate that. Everybody would <laughs> unsub if I sang, so uh, that's yes. why I choose not to. Thank you for keeping the uh, interest of the subs in mind. I don't care about the subs. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead and sing the whole thing. So uh, it's, it's been a few uh, weeks since we've recorded one. Um, honestly, we're getting into that part of the year now where, you know, we've got family occasions, people doing vacations, coming into town, all that kind of thing. So... If your intention is to get a podcast every single week, uh, unfortunately, you're not going to get that. You might get like two a, uh, a month, but we do have some guests lined up uh, per my sources, uh, be, that being Sarge and Chris. We do have some guests uh, lined up for the upcoming podcast. A couple of people you've heard of, a couple of people maybe you haven't heard of, um, but we definitely do look forward to uh, bringing the podcast to you. Um, man, we missed so much in the last couple of weeks, so much to talk about. Um, I feel like as far as the NFL goes, the playoff picture, I, I know they say it's too early for it to start forming, but you can kind of see a little bit as to, you know, who the real deal is in the league and which teams are posers and which teams are, you know, the real deal. I think... I, I think we talked a little bit before the podcast started, but I think um, the 49ers are are definitely classified as a real deal. No, they're not. They scored nine they points on the Redskins. It's okay. They scored, they scored nine points against Moron, Dipshit, Clown, Ass, Chris who, <laughs> Chris, who won that game? They scored nine points. Who won that they game, Chris? In, they, they did not get into the end zone. The Redskins how many, how won un- that game until like the last four minutes. How many they, undefeated teams are there are in the NFL? Pretty- <laughs> how many how many undefeated teams are in the NFL oh, right now? Goodness. Two, but the 49ers have had a yeah, cupcake yeah, schedule. Okay, so they, oh, now they this barely is a cupcake beat, schedule. Oh, now they it's a They barely cup, yeah. beat the Rams. The Rams and the Redskins won that barely game. beat the Dolphins. They should have tied in both. I, I'm not. I, I want the Redskins to go 0 and 16, so they get rid of Bruce Allen, who's well, the they biggest. Obviously, can't in, do that now. <laughs> in football, well, one in fifteen. Then I, I, I want them to lose because it, it's like, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, you have to hit rock bottom to go back up, and that's what I want them See, to do. See, I, I never understood the tanking mentality. Um, See, I'm not saying as, tanking. I, as much as I hate the Steelers, that's one of those organizations. I, I mean, you, you, it's written all over their stadium. Is the standard is the standard? What does that mean? It means. No matter what the circumstances are, play to win. You play to win exactly. Uh, there are certain teams I think that they don't just don't have it in them to tank. <clears throat> you know, no, I, I think <laughs> it's I, I, I it's different. It's I want them to fail not because I hate the team. It's because I think it's what's necessary for change to finally occur. So it's in the right AFC now. North, we have a team that's. That looks like they're tanking. Do you think the Bengals are actually tanking, or are they just that bad? No, uh, that's one of those circumstances where I just think they're that bad. Well, they hired a clown as their coach. There's two undefeated teams and two winless teams. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're legitimately just that bad. I think you know the Bengals play the Bengals? Dolphins this year, so. Somebody's Who would have thought Bengals fans would want Marvin Lewis back, but they probably do right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very sad situation for them. Well, what they did is everybody thought they would hire the next Sean McVay, and, you know, maybe somebody will be close, but, you know, they hired somebody who makes Jim Zorn look like uh, Bill Belichick. 
I don't want the next Sean McVay. I won't, if Tomlin was to get fired today, I want them to trade away everything and pay out the ass to try to get <laughs> Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do, I really think that they're going to keep Tomlin no matter what the no, they, circumstances they don't, they don't fire coaches as long as they can have as yeah. long as they have winning seasons and Tomlin has never had a losing season he's also the youngest head coach to have won a he was, he was the youngest head coach to win a, win a Super Bowl yeah I mean he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination I mean a couple oh, no, of years no. ago we heard the criticism of him being the quote unquote locker room uh, players coach that was last year you know and and they all love him uh, Le'Veon Bell loved him AB loved him um, so I don't know I, I think I think they'll they'll stick with him because that's their guy um, well the, the Steelers typically don't fire head coaches because they're having a bad time at the at that time if their body of work turns out to be positive like if they end up if the Steelers end up going 500, I think Tomlin's job is safe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Uh, because, I think especially goes... considering the, the, the shape of that team right now where they're down to their third quarterback. and I don't think you fire him if you go 7-9 and nine or 6-10 and 10 either. I, I mean, think they start just... thinking about it if they go 7-9. and nine. Anytime no, you go I think, under 500. I think if you, I think it, well, if you get to 6-10, and 10, there's a slight chance five and eleven. There's a moderate chance. Worse than that, it's getting likely. But I mean, he's been there and had so much success for so long. I think you know seven and nine. You got to give him. I mean, it's not like he had a full deck of cards he's playing with. I mean, you know, you're telling him to win a hand of poker and taking all the aces and kings out of the deck. I mean, he's <laughs> had the deck. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Well, I mean, he's he's had a stacked deck during his time there. I mean, he had he had uh, the defense that won two Super Bowls with Troy Polamalu and you know all those guys, and then he had oh, yeah. the the offense that on paper was unstoppable, and then that turned out to be not the case. And then they well, went to the playoffs with Antonio yeah. Brown. He got hit in the head by a dirty player, and then he he was never the same again. That was a clean hit. Yeah, it was not a clean. It all went downhill. Just Brady. kidding. <laughs> you know, there's rumors that he uh, he might actually be banned from the NFL, like Shadow like he, Man. He's he's suspended <laughs> for the season, <laughs> but he might not be able to come back. I think he's he might be blacklisted from the NFL. Wow. Just because he refuses to change the way he plays and he plays dirty. Isn't that what they said about uh, Kaepernick, that he's he's blacklisted? Well, Kaepernick yeah. is blacklisted because he's he's too divisive in the locker room, I think. He's too do, he's too divisive to keep on your team and have a positive outcome from it. That's it's true. For a team it causes too much drama in the yeah, locker room. Yeah, he's an he's unwanted distraction. I agree. He's, he might be a, he, he's an okay. He's a good quarterback. He's just He's not worth the effort with all the locker room drama he's going to have that comes with him. Now, the Steelers are on their third string uh, quarterback. What would what would your initial reaction be if the Steelers signed Kaepernick? They wouldn't sign Kaepernick. Not after the head case that they had with Antonio Brown. They don't need another one. Um, I don't think they're looking for a quarterback as – that as that shows that they sh- they traded away their first all their first round picks. Yeah. And I mean they I think they're going to they're going to stick with Ben until his contract's out. And then it's either going to be Rudolph or Duck. And Duck was so Duck is only the second Steelers quarterback in the past out of the past 8, I think, that won his first game, his first start. The only other one being Ben. Interesting. Because Cordell Stewart lost his first start. That's the only one I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that that stat and I was like, oh, there's Cordell Stewart. He's the one that killed the the Browns in a like a fifty five to nothing shutout. Yep, I remember oh, that. Wait, he he was he was not good. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> he was uh, Cordell Stewart was good, but he wasn't like I don't. I don't think the Steelers knew how to handle him. 
because I mean, he did. He had good games, and then he had terrible games. He even played for the Ravens for a while, didn't he? He did. Yeah, the Ravens get all the Steelers trash. <laughs> we get all, everyone's <laughs> trash from around the league. Like if they're old and getting ready to retire, the Ravens want them. Speaking of trash, look at Joe Flacco, man. That guy is in a bad shape. He's not shape trash. Right His now, offensive man. line won't block for him at all. He's not trash. He's trash. And if you put it that way, you know. Well, they hired um, uh, an old head coach, and he's no better than what they had in Vance Joseph in Denver. Uh, so uh, I think Denver is turning into the Redskins with their coaching carousel. You know, you know what? You know what? If this is gonna. Be- you know, left field thought here was uh, when Tim Tebow played his first season for the Broncos, they had one head coach, and that head coach wanted to train Tebow to be better at his throwing, you know, his his throwing motion to get him better. And the coach that took over for him the next season, I guess he didn't see it that way. Right. So I think I think that if they didn't switch coaches, Tebow could be really good right about now. If they'd have just worked on his mechanics, and he would have been, he would have been great. But yeah, who knows, man? Things being the way they are, he ended up being a backup for the Jets, and then that was it. And then he went to play minor league baseball. The Jets is where you go when you're, you want your career to die. <sighs> Rest Don't in peace, Le'Veon Bell. Bell. <laughs> That's the one guy I was watching tonight. By the way, like I said, we're recording on the 21st of October. Uh, we just got through watching uh, Jets and Patriots play. I got to say, watching that game, I'm like, man, I bet you Le'Veon Bell misses playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they're down 33 nothing to the Patriots. That's the thing, though. If he, if he would have taken the deal the Steelers offered him, he'd be making more money on a oh, more yeah. productive team. A team whose offensive line was basically made for him. But... Well, he thought he'd get more money just, somewhere else. That bridge just got burned, I think. I think there was too much. And this is where I thought Tomlin might be in trouble last year was, you know, the whole thing with the, um, the national anthem and what's the guy's name who came out? And Alejandro talked, Villanueva. Yeah, Villanueva. He kind of badmouthed Villanueva for coming out saying, well, we needed 100% participation. Then Antonio Brown. Then are you Le'Veon are you gonna Bell. tell a are you gonna tell a former Ranger that he can't come out for the national anthem? Tomlin Man, did. Tomlin mm-hmm. did. I mean, after the game, they asked him about it, and he said we wanted a hundred percent participation. Tomlin wanted him to be one of the other players, which is funny because Ben Brown and Bell were all gonna cut, or Ben I was Ben and Cameron Hayward. Yeah, I remember that. We're going to come out and stand with him. But when they were bringing the flag out, they blocked the the pathway out for the players. And by the time they got to the end of the tunnel, they were starting to play the anthem. They didn't want to come out during the during the anthem. That's interesting. That was that but, was a story from Cameron Hayward. So, but yeah, Tom. That's where I thought Tomlin was going to be in trouble. Where you know he has all these rifts in the locker room, and I mean. You know, I get that you want your team to pick all, or, but, you know, like you said, how are you going to tell a former uh, uh, serviceman that he can't come out and support his country? I would have, and you know, I would have told him to pound sand if I was a player. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Bench me. Bench me. He really well, obviously didn't. Good for him. He's, he's a Pro Bowl caliber you know no that's what i'm saying if i were ball. him i would have said you know what bench me or trade me then if you don't like it i just don't like what the league has turned into as far as like the commingling of politics and sports well politics. actually i'd say this year it's really been kind of cut back i mean you don't see the uh, anti-trump stuff like you did you don't have the players really discussing the league i would say that is political now is the nba uh, for sure where they're where they're 
on their knees for China, literally. And you have uh, um, sellout Steve and Steve Kerr saying, well, you don't ask the Chinese about shooting up a mole with an AK-47. Well, screw you, Steve, you anti-American prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I mean, he's not wrong. Why don't you go live in China and, you know, you can you can uh, be the toothpick that you are and eat rice the rest of your life. They were actually talking about that on the radio this morning. And uh, apparently, if an American tourist goes to China, they have a set route that you have to take and if you veer from that route at all you could be you can be criminally processed in yeah, that is so stupid i hate that well like, why you have it, to it, you it, have to stay on schedule and hit every point on your schedule for what like if i was a tourist yeah you're not allowed to go there's you have so, like i'd have to go from like stupid. my hotel to the great wall and if i was like <laughs> Supposed yeah, you, 11, you have 15. to schedule where you're going to go, and you have to meet that schedule, or you can be criminally processed. That's as what they were saying on the radio. At the Great Wall of China at 11.17, and I was supposed to be there at 11.15, I'm going to jail? Here's yeah, the thing, possibly. though. As bad as that sounds, like, there's other countries that are exact same way. Like, um, one of my buddies recently had a uh, wedding, and they decided to have it in Mexico. Uh, which I'm not sure why they would do that, which is why I never didn't go to it. But he told me that <laughs> um, he told me that the resort they were staying at was like five star and everything, which I don't know what that means if it's in Mexico, but it's a five star resort. Um, Probably and, there's no drug cartel, and you yeah, five star resort in Mexico shot. pretty mean pretty much means you have. Uh, you know, running water, but, um, it means you, it means you can drink the water <laughs> at your own risk. Yeah. So he told me that <laughs> everything on the resort was fair game, but that they were never to exceed or leave the, uh, the perimeter of the resort because there's like favelas and stuff and, you know, gangsters looking to rob Americans. And so like, it's just not good at all. It's not safe. There's, you know, like we're talking about vacation towns. I'm not talking about Bumbleton, Mexico. I'm talking about like Cancun and I'm talking about like Acapulco, like places that are renowned for being vacation spots. Like they encourage you not to go into the city and just to remain at the hotel or the, uh, the resort. So there's these a, are the people, these are, this is why we should have open borders so that these people can come into the U S yeah. Right. Tell me about it. Anyway, exactly, that's, that's, right? pol- that's politics. And, oh, and, and, speaking yeah. of that, I, you know, I have to vote for Bernie now because we need the bartender. <laughs> we need the bartender AOC, who he's promised will be part of his administration. You know, let's have a bartender running the country. That's what we need. I wouldn't vote for Bernie Sanders because of one line he said. No, I'm talking about uh, Ocasio Cortez. He's going to put her as a chief. Wait, what uh, did so. what did Bernie Sanders say? Uh, no, no, no. White people don't wins, know what it's like to be poor. That if Bernie wins, AOC is going to be a big part, a uh, uh, big part of his administration. That's a tragedy. So we'll have a bartender and a senile socialist running our country. And I love, and I love. Bartenders, I mean, you know, you go out, you, get, you make a good drink, you know, but I, I don't think they should be running the country. Right. I'm, I'm the same way. I think everyone is good at one thing. Like Tom Brady is fantastic at throwing touchdown passes. Uh, teachers are great at teaching, um, but I would never want Lamar Jackson to read me a book. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's that <laughs> oh kind of thing. God. But you that, wouldn't mind having him as a running back, though. He's not a running back. He's a quarterback. I didn't Guys, say he no. was a running back. I said you wouldn't mind having him as a running back. He's, he's a running back. No, I, I would mind having him as a running back because then that means he's not passing the ball, which is what he's good at. No, he ran for 100 <laughs> yards against the Seahawks. So here's a funny stat. Um, prior to that game on uh, Sunday against the Seahawks, prior to that game, he was ranked 10th best as far as like rushing yards in 2019 goes, at the end of the game, he was fifth ranked overall. He jumped up five spots, and he's currently fifth overall 
And it's funny, I posted on Twitter, like every everybody on the list is a running back except him, and he's fifth. Like it's so unreal that this guy's this fast and nobody can catch him. So for Lamar Jackson, what is his passing stats looking like out of curiosity, considering how good he is at rushing so far? They're decent. Hmm. Okay, I'll take your word on that. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what his stats, stats. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what his stats are. This. I have no idea. I mean, that's just what uh, Sarge. What do you think about that? The fact that he's ranked fifth overall, and as far as rushing yards in the NFL right now, I think he's in the wrong position. Now, I just think Seattle needs to fire their offensive coordinator after that abomination of a game I watched. Okay, so Lamar Jackson is mid- is like middle of the road as far as passer rating. As bad as I thought he would be, to be honest. So he, he's 16th out of 32. Yeah, and if you take away his legs, and I mean... <laughs> Cam Newton's you know, 32. You know what I'm so. saying. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> figuratively take away his legs and make he's him a pocket worthless. passer. He, he's a bottom, probably bottom five quarterback. So the, the, he's the, successful. the NFL's official website has Andy Dalton higher ranked than, than Lamar Jackson. Yeah. As and far as passing goes. As far as, as, far as passing, passing goes. If you... Stuck Lamar in the pocket and did not allow him to run. He, the Ravens would probably be two and five instead of five and two. I if you mean, put Lamar that's, Jackson that's... in the pocket and tell him not to run, you pretty much have Dak Prescott. Okay. <laughs> no, because Dak Prescott can still run. <laughs> you know no, what? Because no, Dak Prescott is good when he has Ezekiel Elliott. When he doesn't have Ezekiel Elliott, he's oh a very God, good dude. quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott ate the freaking Eagles up. Oh, it was so Lord, fun to watch, I'll tell you. Crazy. How was that, watching that drubbing of the Eagles? I watched that glorious. dude bulldoze four people to get into the end zone after he was denied a touchdown. He <laughs> like, shoved what? the shit out of Malcolm <laughs> Jenkins, man. It was great. <laughs> I was enjoying. You know, this is a great. This is a perfect week for me because I got no. I got no eggs in the in the basket for this week. Me either. Still, Neither. Still Ravens are on a bye week. Steelers didn't play this week. Yes, sir. Cowboys and on a bye week, too. Oh, I get Thursday, which I'm not even going to watch the game. I'm going to just watch Netflix that night. Uh, Who plays Thursday? Redskins at the Vikings. There's You're a Redskins no- fan. You're not going to watch the game? Come on, man. No. no. I. What's the point? They're going to... Kirk Cousins is going to throw seven touchdown passes. You don't against... know that. Oh, don't be like that. He might throw eight. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you don't the know Steelers. that, Chris. We have, we have, <laughs> we actually played better in the secondary without Norman getting beat every damn play. That bum, who's just stealing money. I mean, he has not earned half of. I mean, he he. Played to earn that money before, but he has not played up to that contract. That's a almost as bad as the Hainsworth contract. You're starting to sound like the uh, town hall guy. So technically, the Steelers should have another bye week this week. Why? Who do they, they play? play? They play the Dolphins. Oh yeah, that's an easy win. You say that, but the, the Steelers have a history of playing down to shitty teams. So we got the Dolphins, the Colts, the Rams, all at home, and then the Browns, Bengals away, and then the Browns at home. That's not a bad remainder of your schedule, man. The Rams, yeah. we we might lose to the Rams. You, no, the Rams have been on a decline recently. But they haven't really been that good. Yeah, the Rams destroyed. I mean, the Falcons are awful. You know what's impressed me the most about the Steelers team so far this year is the way that they've cleaned up that defense. That defense is actually pretty good this year. Yeah, it is. They're ranked like top three or four for sacks this year. Let me see. Steelers defense is actually really nasty, especially that secondary with the addition of Micah. Um... Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. 
I think that was a huge pickup for you guys. Yeah, it was. Speaking that, that of huge up pickups, to... how about the Ravens? Marcus Peters getting like three days to prepare for the Seattle Seahawks game. And on the, in the very first quarter gets a pick six. He's a kneeler. I don't I would <laughs> want him on my team. I've heard that he get that he's like burnt toes, so I don't I don't know what he, how good he is anymore. Hey man, I'm going off the game footage, and he he played pretty well for us. Uh, I'll give you that. He he had a good game. Well, the Redskins the Redskins are gonna go two and fourteen if they're lucky. They might beat the Jets at home. Might, but the Jets destroyed Dallas, so I doubt. It. So I take that back. After this week, since the Steelers didn't play, they are tied for sixth. Or fourth place for number of total sacks. Huh. 14 sacks in six games. You know, this um, week seven of football has been overall so far the best week of uh, football picks I've had all year long. I only got three games wrong. The, the three games I got wrong were um, I had Green Bay picked to beat Oakland. Or no, not, uh, sorry, I had uh, Detroit pick to beat Minnesota, which didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, I had the Giants pick to beat Arizona, which that didn't happen. And then uh, this one I'm actually happy that I was wrong about. The Seattle picked to win against Baltimore. I'm kind of glad I got that one wrong. So I got three wrong. Not bad. If you guys are ready, we can go into our week eight picks. Yeah, we're ready, man. All right, well, we're going to start off with Chris this time. Since it is his Thursday night football game, the 1 in 6 Washington Redskins going into Minnesota to play the 5 and 2 Vikings. The 1 in 6 Redskins, I could care less about anymore cuz the Nationals are in the World series. But uh they will get trounced. I think it's going to be like 38 45 to you know maybe 10 if they're lucky i agree uh, i'm taking minnesota yep same here yeah is it, is it, minnesota. the red the redskins are like a bye week yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> they're one win away from being tied for the worst record in the nfl there's three bye weeks or four you bye know, weeks if you play the right open. teams I was really hoping the Dolphins converted on that two-point conversion because I just wanted us to go in 16 and just have somebody go into Dan Snyder's office and look at the shit show that you have created. <laughs> All right, next game is the 5-2 and two Seattle Seahawks getting their last loss courtesy of the Ravens. Going into Atlanta to play the one in six Falcons. I've got Seattle in this one. Uh, Quint, Quint, and Quinn will be fired before the season's over. Mark my words. Uh, his team's quit on him. Uh, Seahawks by fourteen or more. What about you guys? Yeah, I got the Seahawks. The Seahawks, the Seahawks. come. Seahawks. Falcons. Off, uh, I don't know what the hell happened to him this year. I think the Seahawks are coming in off a depressing loss to a bad team. Okay, the Ravens aren't a bad team. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of bounced back after that embarrassing loss. Tell you wow, you guys are a bunch Russell of haters. Russell Wilson's got to got to teach the young man who's boss. All right, next game: the three and four Tennessee Titans hosting the two and four Tampa Bay Bucks. I think I'm going to go Tennessee here. Uh, I, I'm very confused about Tampa Bay. I uh, talked to Alex, a.k.a. Purple Swordfish, about this. I don't know where I stand about this team. Do they suck? Are they good? I have no idea. Oh, they suck, but Bruce Arians is a good coach. I think it's just going to take him a couple of years, if they give him a couple of years, because Tampa is quick to fire a coach. Uh, I'll take the Bucks by a small margin, because... Tennessee's kind of the same team. They'll show up one week and look like they're the Patriots, and the next week they look like they're the Dolphins. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 
this is one of those games where I'm like, I don't care. I hope they tie and they both lose. Because to me, both teams are underperforming and it won't be a fun game to watch. But you have to pick a winner. Okay. Uh, just for Alex, I'll pick Tampa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, if it came down to a coin toss, I wouldn't mind, but I think I'm going to go ahead and pick the Buccaneers to win this one. Okay. Next game is the 3-3. Three and three. Chicago Bears hosting the 2-5 and five LA Chargers. I don't know with this one. Uh, Chicago's a four-point favorite, but I'm going to have to take the LA Chargers to play away and get the win. I'm going to pick the uh, Bears. I think the Chargers have just collapsed. And I don't know what it is with them. They have a down season about every other year, and they are too talented to have these losing seasons. Sarge, what do you think? I want to say the Bears because I don't think the uh, I don't think the Chargers are good this year. Well, neither team is very good. Well, I mean the Bears at least. Look like they're trying, <laughs> but the Chargers, uh, the Chargers were basically shut out through three quarters of football against a Steelers team on their third quarterback. It's all busted up with a defense that's just getting good this year. They could they couldn't do anything until garbage time in the fourth quarter. Maybe and then they almost got up. Then, then they almost came back. As so, bad as a third string <laughs> yeah. quarterback, Mr. Bisky is a four string quarterback, as far as I'm concerned. But, I don't know. You got to taste the biscuit. I'm taking the I'm taking the Bears. Okay, Colby. I'm gonna take the Chargers on a game winning kick. Okay, very nice. Next game, the six and one New Orleans Saints, who by the way beat Chicago last week. Uh, they host the three, three, and one Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to say a strong favorite here, uh, New Orleans. Uh, Saints by a lot. Large. Uh, I think yeah, the Saints are going to win. Yeah, this is a tough one. I got to go Saints. You think this is a tough one? This, this is a tough one. <laughs> Next Tough game. For Arizona. Next game, the five and one Buffalo Bills host the three and four Philadelphia Eagles. I think I'm gonna go with uh I think I'm gonna go with I don't know, the Eagles are playing really bad lately, but I think I'm gonna go with the Eagles to win. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. This is I think this is the Bills comeback season i think they're they're doing better now than they have in years they look good i don't i don't i see them as being the only competition for the for the patriots in that entire division so well, you're taking them but yeah i'm taking i'm taking the bills um that's tough because i don't know how good the bills really are because uh when they played the patriots they got walloped uh, but the Eagles have, I'm going to take the Eagles by, you know, like 24, 21, something like that. Okay. Colby. I want the bills to win so bad, but I don't know if I can trust Josh Allen, but <laughs> just because I'll go to the bills. Just anyway. do it. Yeah, just do it. Up. There In you case, go. I'm switching my go. pick too. I'm going, bu- I'm going with the Buffalo bills. That's right. Switch over to the good side. Maybe. Let's go. <laughs> Next game. Chris, Chris could stay with his crappy Eagles team. Yeah, Chris, you're all alone, man. I have to abandon ship. <laughs> um, next game is the two, three, and one Detroit Lions hosting the two and five New York Giants. I think I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> you can laugh about all you want, but I think I'm going to go with. Uh, with Detroit, I think they they've been playing pretty well lately, especially last week. Last week, uh, <laughs> barely losing to not barely losing, but uh, they they put up quite a fight against the Vikings. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Detroit too because for me, the Giants are basically another bye week. If you can, as long as you can stop Saquon Barkley, they're they're done. This is true. Uh, Lions. I've got to go Lions. So we're all on the Lions. Next game is the four and three LA Rams hosting the O zero the winless. 0 oh, 7 Cincinnati Bengals. I think I'm going to take the Rams, obviously, here. <laughs> I think the Rams will win. I think that the Bengals are going to be so blown out in this game that people will they'll ha- be forced to start thinking about firing Taylor. Oh, you and firing people, dude. I, I think, think the Rams win by two a points. Horrible coach. You got the Rams winning by two points? What? Yep, because all they'll need is a safety. <laughs> gonna put no, like it, random seriously, I, th- I think that I think the Rams win that game handedly. Okay, Colby. The Rams they win by at least twenty eight. All right. Uh, next game up on the docket is going to be the four and three Houston Texans hosting the three and three Oakland Raiders. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the Texans at home. Yeah, if the Texans were – if that game was in Oakland, I'd probably take Oakland. But since it's in Texas, I'll, play, I'll take Texas. Uh, take the, Houston. The Raiders are just dysfunctional. Uh, they'll get creamed. Yep, Te- Texans all the way. Deshaun Watson will have a great game. I can see that already. Okay. We're all on the Texans as well. All right, so next game up um, is three and four Jacksonville Jaguars, which no longer have Jalen Ramsey. Uh, They host the one and five New York Jets, who just got destroyed on Monday Night Football against the Patriots. I'm taking Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville. I mean, the Jets are just terrible. I think both teams suck. They, oh, yeah, no doubt. Both teams do suck, but someone has to win this game. I guess Jacksonville, but I uh, I do a house clean with both teams from the, the exact Assuming the you can't fire anyone right now, who do you pick oh. to win this week? <laughs> <laughs> Make a pick. I just said Jacksonville. All right, Colby. High school coach. Uh, I got to go New York. Are you serious? I think New York can win that game somehow. I don't know. I just you're being serious it. right now. You're not even joking. Yes. It, it'll no, have I'm to not be joking. On the back of Le'Veon Bell because Sam Darnold threw what he's he's averaging at least two picks a game. I I don't know the the Jets play so well against Dallas. I guess it's just <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I don't know. I think they can win that game. I'm gonna stick with that pick. All right, next game up is going to be the undefeated 6-0 San Francisco 49ers hosting the 4-2 Carolina Panthers. This is going to be a good game. I think uh, there's potential this week for for uh, 49ers to get their first loss. What do you guys think? I think it depends. I mean, if, if Kyle Allen plays like he has been, I think they have a good chance at winning that game. If they put in Cam Newton, I think they lose. Um, so you think Cam Newton's done? I don't think he's done. I think he's just. He, he's, you think he's done? He played. He played what two games this year, and he lost both of them. And then Kyle Allen comes in, and he's won five straight. Okay. So, um, for the record, uh, for the record, I think I'm going to go with San Fran to stay undefeated. I, th- I think I'm going to go San Francisco, but I think it's going to be a really good game. And it could really go either way. Well, I, I think we can ask Chris since he just got through watching San Francisco play his Redskins. Who do you I think, think their win? offense looked absolutely horrible. Uh, I think the Panthers have a good chance. You're not saying that out of, out of spite, are you? No, I mean, watch some of the highlights. They looked horrible. They couldn't do anything against the Redskins' defense. Wasn't that played in like a a monsoon-type condition? 
They still, were slip and sliding, so yeah. Still, like, you should score more than nine points. Okay, and Colby? I got the Panthers. All righty. So next game up is going to be the undefeated also, the second undefeated team, the New England Patriots. Uh, they host the 2-4 and four Cleveland Browns. I'm taking New England by a big margin. Same. Yeah, Patriots. If it were possible to forfeit a game in the first half, it'd be the Browns, but yeah, Patriots. <laughs> so oh, are we all on the Patriots? Yeah. Yes. All right. I think if we weren't, then we went out. Then we had to be watching football. All right. So the last of the late afternoon games is going to be the four and two Indianapolis Colts hosting the two and five Denver Broncos. Um, I think Indianapolis is going to take this game. Um, the Broncos have absolutely no offensive line. Joe Flacco has no time to throw it whatsoever. I'm taking the Colts. Also, Joe Flacco is trash, so I'm taking the Colts. He's not trash. It is. He's trash. <laughs> He's, He's pretty trash. bad, man. I can. Colts lie. and the Broncos will keep falling into rock bottom. Okay, Colby, I'm I'm assuming you're taking Indy. Yes, sir. All righty. That brings us to the Sunday night game. Uh, the five and two Kansas City Chiefs host. The six and one Green Bay Packers, man, this this game is going to be a treat to watch. Uh, uh, the Packer, the Packers by twenty. I think the Chiefs are nothing without Mahomes. I think yep. they're going to get their boat race. I think the enemy should be taken off every head coaching list because he's been exposed for he couldn't beat the Colts with Mahomes. Chris, so uh, take him off. I rarely agree with anything you say, but. I, I'm, I'm, I agree with you here. <laughs> I agree with you yeah. here, man. Matt I'm, Moore I'm taking is, the Packers. Matt Moore is not good. I take the Packers. Yeah, Packers. I do have one good thing to say about Matt Moore. He, uh, he did take a shot from Bud Dupree in the playoffs that I thought was going to kill him. He took it like he a champ. He was, he was out for like two plays and came back in. Yeah, he took it like a champ. Like when he got hit, I thought he was dead. Every time I hear Matt Moore's <laughs> name, I just see him laying on the ground and Bud Dupree sitting there looking at him. Like, so I think that it's, it's, it's pretty rare when you see a linebacker hit a quarterback and then have to ask him, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, our final remaining game, I don't even feel like I should even have to ask you guys, but it's the two and four <clears throat> Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the O and six Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Dolphins. Whose ever idea it was to put this on Monday Night Football? I have no idea why they would. Uh, it's such a bad game. And the Steelers were on Monday Night Football like two weeks ago, too. They, Pittsburgh has gotten so many primetime games this year. Well, Monday Night Football has no prestige anymore. It, it's it's like bottom barrel games on a bottom barrel uh, uh, commentating crew. It, it oh, you sucks. mean you don't want to you don't want to listen to Booger McFarlane? I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible. Even the broadcasting. I mean, the graphics that they use. I mean, it looks like NFL Blitz or something. Here, I here mean, comes Chris with the only person who gets mad because the grass is the, the wrong graphics. color on Sunday Night exactly. Football. Exactly. <laughs> well, it looks like an arcade. It looks like it's some sort of arcade thing that I'm looking at. Is it I'm fair to say we're all in Pittsburgh for Monday night? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's very fair. <laughs> well, I mean, it's nice that Pittsburgh gets a second bye week. <laughs> Pretty generous of the Miami Dolphins organization. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if if the Steelers are going to lose to a bad team, this would be the one. But I don't think they're going to lose. I think uh, the backup quarterbacks that are playing right now are fighting for the number two spot because... Duck proved that he was he was good enough to beat the Chargers, and Kyra Rudolph is is the number two right now. So I think it's going to be a good game for the Steelers. And I won't be watching Sunday Night Football because I'll be watching the World Series. Oh my God! Oh, <laughs> okay, Jesus. you know what? Just get Nobody it out cares. of your system. There we go. Chris, you have thirty seconds to get it out of your system. Go. <laughs> Time's ticking. 
What am I supposed to say? Talk about baseball. Oh, how they went from 19 and 31 to the uh, National League. 15 Champions. seconds. Well, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to adhere to this bullshit clog number one. <laughs> but, yeah. And uh, it's been a great season, and I'll be at game four. Time's up. All right, we're doing baseball. <laughs> Time's up. Well, that was Second our one. Here you go. <laughs> Baseball night on the uh, podcast is done. That's done. Yep. So that brings us We're to on. the end of the podcast. That was our week eight picks uh, brought to you by me, Sarge, Chris, and Colby. Colby, uh, as always, man, again, thank you for uh, being on the podcast. It's always a pleasure having you on. Um, sure, man. Yeah, man. Happy, happy birthday to you. Hopefully you had a good one. Sir, I appreciate that. Man. Um but yeah, that's going to have to do it for us this week. Uh, hopefully we can bring you one in another couple weeks, hopefully with a, another special guest who I think you've heard before, um, but he's got some major news that we want to bring to you guys. So uh, major life updates. So we're going to, we're excited to bring you that whenever possible. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. This is myself, Sarge, Chris, and Colby checking up out of here. We will see you guys next time. And go Steelers. Cowboy. Oh. Cowboy. I hope, the, I hope the stadium falls in on the Nationals. Oh, Colby good. sounds like... Death on people. That's real. That's real. I didn't say I wished anybody would die. I just want the stadium to fall in. Listening <laughs> to Colby say go Cowboys, there's really no masculine way of saying that. <laughs>